Mike, I know you wanted to kind of get into, hey, for the average person, where's the rubber meet the road on these rate cuts? So let's do that and and kind of get into it. So the first question that I, I have seen asked quite a bit is, okay, does this mean that mortgage rates are now half a percent less? No. But there's good news there, though. It's just had nothing to do with the Fed. Uh, over well, the it last, did have something to do with the Fed. Yeah, it had something to do with what the Fed was indicating. But over the last, let's call it 11 months, mortgage rates have come down by almost a full two percentage points. You were up over 8% in October of last year, and you are now, according to Mortgage News Daily, on the 30-year fixed at 6.15%. And but- th- and yesterday, again, that's not looking at points or anything like that. Sure. So you can easily get that rate into the fives. But yesterday, you know, technically, long-term rates like the ten-year Treasury, from which mortgage rates are derived, they went up. Yep, they went up on you know uh, potential growth expectations and the economy doing pretty well. Now, let's say you have a mortgage that's out there already. If it's a fixed-rate mortgage, what the Fed did yesterday doesn't impact your mortgage payment in any way, shape, or form. Of course, doesn't change it. In the case of some variable rate mortgages, depending on the terms in the contract, and again, they're all different in terms of the rate that they're indexed to. Some are indexed to Fed funds rates, some are indexed to SOFR, some are indexed to the prime rate. There's a million different places that you can go. But some of them will adjust down if you're through that, you know, fixed period and into the readjustment period. And so you may see that as soon as your next payment, depending on the terms of the contract. Again, sometimes they do yearly, sometimes it's month to month. You have to look at your specific adjustable rate mortgage. Home equity line of credit, likewise, should immediately adjust. Correct. If you have credit card debt outstanding, most of those are tied to either the Fed funds rate or the prime rate. The prime rate typically moves in lockstep with the Fed funds rate. It's it's higher typically, uh, but it usually moves down when the Fed funds rate does as well. And so there's a pretty good chance that credit card rates are going to adjust as soon as the next monthly payment as well. Again, it's by a half percent. Remember, the average credit card interest rate is now north of 22 percent. So it's not like you're getting some huge drop in the interest rate there. But if you're carrying a balance on a credit card, it can provide a little bit of modest relief mm. in that respect. And remember, the Yay, Fed is pricing I'm at in 25% interest. Now I'm down to 24 and a half. <laughs> Baby steps. Yeah. Baby steps. Yeah. Uh, other things. Let's say you have a high yield savings account or a money market account at a bank. Uh, more likely than not, the interest rates on those might have already been coming down in the last month or two. But otherwise, a lot of those accounts may be adjusted downward by the institutions to better reflect where short-term rates are today. So that's something that you might see on that side of things. CD rates are not changed directly by the Fed, but again, longer-term rates, one, two, three, four years, have been coming down over the course of the summer. And as such, CD rates have already dropped over the course of the summer from, you know, you could get some, you know, in the 5% range for, you know, a, a couple of years earlier in the summer. You're down into the mid to high threes now. Is that accurate, Mike? Um, yeah, if, if you are out on a couple year CD, you're in the high threes. I'm looking now at three month CDs and treasuries, which sure. is the closest thing to Fed funds, and you're looking at four and three quarters. Yep. I will say, as, as much, you know, excitement as a, a rate cut generates for borrowers, I, I will say the ability to easily go and find, you know, products anywhere from three months out to five years that were at five to five and a quarter percent. I'm going to miss that a little bit. Looking pretty nice. I'm going to miss that a little bit. I got a question yesterday that was a tougher one to answer, which is this was specifically from a woman who was listing her home and hadn't really gotten any bites. But what's it mean for the real estate market when the Fed embarks on a cutting cycle? And I don't know that I have an answer. Depends on the cycle. In 2008, it was still very bad. Yeah. Because the real estate market was the source of the problems. Right. In other markets, it's not necessarily, you know, in other cutting cycles, that's not necessarily the case because not all cutting cycles are caused by over leverage in the housing market. And certainly this one is not. This one, if, if you look at pretty much any metric out there, delinquencies and foreclosures are still well below 2019 levels. Uh, the amount of equity in homes is at an all time high right now. So this is not a housing caused cutting cycle. And as such, there is the potential for some additional activity, but... I could see some excitement being built on the part of buyers after the publicity that yesterday got. Yeah, I mean, and 
And look, it might show up right in time for the spring housing season. It, it has the potential yep. to be a very busy spring in housing, but it depends on how the next six months go. If you get a recession showing up in two months, not so much. Probably not going to be the busiest housing season in the spring.